This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Snapchat. The working class nerds three some. Uh, 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 yeah, Vern! Let's go, Vern! That's all you could hear is him yelling. Uh, uh. It's like, you're so fucking sexy, Vern! Woo! Snapchat is only a two some now because Nick doesn't send us videos anymore. Hi, <laughs> I'm Marcus. I'm Atrex. And I'm Nick. We are working class nerds. Cue the intro. Right, we are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, June 22nd, 2023, and you can find this 203 podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere you can find a podcast in the galaxy far, far away. You can also find every single Working Class Nerds episode on YouTube. Just search for the Working Class Nerds podcast or go to youtube.com slash at Working Class Nerds. Click on playlist, click on Working Class Nerds, and boom! Every single episode, past and present, right at your very fingertips. You can watch me play video games Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays at twitch.tv slash MarcusB814. And you can catch the epic return of me to streaming next Friday, June 30th at twitch.tv slash A underscore Atrex. What time? 9.30 Eastern. Okay. And you can watch me play video games every single Monday night at twitch.tv slash NickVern51. And we're all on the social medias. I'm at MarcusB814. I am at Atrex underscore A. And I'm at Nick Vern. That's an ACKV on this week's episode. I am back from the NXL Mid Atlantic Major in Philly, and I've got some hardware with me. That's the silver medal. That's not really silver clinking against the microphone. Uh, we took second place. And the nerds and I have a whole lot to say because they didn't talk about their weeks at all last week. So we got a lot of stuff going on. Last oh, week's yeah. episode was so good. And it's my fault that we didn't talk about our week because the show was going on and I was I was having so much fun and I texted Atrex. I'm like, this is amazing. Like, let's skip our section. And he's like, fuck yeah. And dude, I legit laughed for an hour and a half. Like yeah. the episode wasn't our typical two hours because we weren't talking about ourselves, but it was hilarious. If you didn't listen to last night last week's episode, and oh my god bubbles did we ever That's all figure I gotta say. out did we ever figure out what was wrong with the end of it no yeah Marcus so did get to it yet oh, i okay. no, no no i looked at it um so what happened was is the episode got cut short because it doesn't even have our what are you guys talking about in here yes, so it, it just does. got cut off at the end no it, it doesn't have that at the end nick no it just cuts off mid question just cuts off oh that's not right then no i know that so oh, I, think it just got, some, I think it just got something happened. Get re-uploaded. Something, something happened, happened, happened during upload. Audacity. Yeah, you probably no, 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 no. not not Audacity. I edited the ending onto it and double checked it before I exported it. So it's a something with Buzzsprout, the hosting platform. It, yeah, it, so you probably just need to there. re-update it. Yeah, I can I can do that in the break. That takes two yeah. seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, yeah. Awesome. like I said, really loud, Marcus. You like is clipping? He? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, like you you were talking at like 50% oh. that volume during the pre-show when we did the sound check. Well, it's because I'm now excited you're that you're back. Excited. Yeah, yeah I'm really actually excited, excited that you're back. That's better. I just turned it out. Division 2 paintball. Yes, that was well, crazy, man. But you were saying? I don't remember okay. now because all I heard was Division 2 paintball. So, A-Tracks, <laughs> what have you been up to these last couple weeks? So, Park Beyond is bringing back the nostalgia and taking it into the beyond. It released last week, uh, just before the show. I pre-ordered it so that I could get all of the cool little um, extras and features that you get. You could get some uh, themes and some roller coaster pieces for pre-ordering the game. 
And I guess they have a season pass that's coming out with extra areas and whatnot. So I'm looking forward to that. But when I was playing the open beta, I got that first park to in to just like print money. Straight up printing money. My enjoyment and amusement money, money, ratings money. were ninety eight percent oh yeah, ninety eight percent among my park patrons. Those two percent were just they were just crabby old people that didn't want to be at an amusement park Karen's. in the first place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They were complaining like, oh, there's nowhere to sit when they're in front of a bench, you know, like just sit down on the bench. Come on, you know? Yeah. yeah. But this bench uh, doesn't have cushions on it for my right. he- for my hemorrhoids. <laughs> and I will say that part of that 2% may have been one small incident where a roller coaster was going just a little too fast. Oh boy! And, and nice. some, I'm I'm not at liberty to say whether there were some injuries <laughs> or not in this fictional theme park, but we stopped the ride. We we you know got a mechanic out there. We fixed everything. It was nice. all good to go. And I'm still loving it since the game released last week. I have continued playing it. I had to play through the open beta part of the campaign all over again. And so it was kind of easy to get back to where I was because I knew roughly how I wanted my park to lay out and it was successful in the open beta. It was successful now in the full release as well. And we didn't have the roller coaster going too fast incident. So in a way, things were even better. Uh, I'm excited to delve into it a little bit deeper. I'm really out of touch with how to build roller coasters and manage a theme park. When I was a kid, oh man, roller coaster tycoon was just my jam. And I was, I was making roller coasters left and right. But see, I enjoyed roller coaster tycoon, but I never, I didn't play it a lot. I think I only played it over like a friend's house, you know? Fair enough. That was one of the few games that I had. And so I just, oh man, I played it so much. Yeah. I, I'm trying to remember the era that Roller Coaster Tycoon was because like early I feel, 2000s. Yeah, so like I remember like my games were Wolfenstein 3D. Yep. Um Doom Doom 2. Doom 2 was it. Like that was the cat's ass and then Half-Life. Like those okay. I feel like but I don't know if that's the same era no, as No, it's way before. Yeah, oh, it like, is? Oh, way before. Yeah. 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 Quite like a few ten, years like before. Like 10 years before. At least, yeah. Oh. Because it's hard to real for me to realize yeah, that, yeah. like... I have the Google, and I just look it up. Early 2000s would be, like, PlayStation 1. Oh, like Castlevania Symphony of the Night. PlayStation 2 had just come out. Uh, uh, roller coaster In the Tycoon. early 2000s, it's that... PlayStation 2 is that old? Yeah. Yeah. Placed it well. Oh, for hold on. First things first. The original Roller Coaster Tycoon came out in uh, March thirty first, nineteen ninety nine. Then Roller oh, Coaster right. Tycoon two, which is what I played the most of, was October third, two thousand two. You that know what's was, wicked? I think that was the one I played the most too. You know what's wicked? Sad. Hmm. Is what? that my son? I'm an Xbox guy. And my son says, Daddy, I want a PlayStation so I can play Miles Morales. <laughs> and yes, just, Marcus. Uh, just have him play on your PC. The PlayStation 2 came out in March March 4th of 2000. Or October of 2000 in the U.S., I should say. Wow. Oh, it's almost 25 years old. Nice. Yeah. Go PlayStation wow. 2. Wow. Yeah. When did, wait, when did Castlevania Symphony of Night come out? Uh, Hold on. Oh, my God. I'm so old. This is what uh, this is museum quality. You see what quality. I mean? Where where I was saying Park Beyond brings back the nostalgia, like all those all the games of that era. I love roller coaster Sims. I didn't play Sims so much, but Roller Coaster Tycoon I played a uh, lot of. I got it. March twentieth, nineteen ninety seven. So Castlevania Symphony of the Night born. came out um, two years before uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon one. Are you paying attention, nice. Marcus? Yeah. I think he's tying his yes. shoe or something. No, no, I am. Or strangling he's a mouse on the floor. He's tying his shoe. 
One, two, tie in my shoe. So if no, there are I have any next, roller coaster, I have, I have next PlayStation Four here, but he has the oh, Miles Morales game at his house that I bought. Uh, oh, I do. Yeah, it's under your TV. Oh, well, you obviously you can just fucking take it back. Yeah. I don't care. But your TV is going to be like half an inch shorter, though. No, it's not holding my TV <laughs> up. It's mounted on the wall. <laughs> Although I had to get creative with that mount because the plaster walls in this super old house. But oh man, I'm so happy I was not a part of hanging those. Yeah, that was a that was a Stormin and Nick. That was a Nick and Norm project. Nick and and Norm. Norm. Yeah, Nick and Norm had a good weekend. Had an amazing weekend, I should say. But anyway, so back to this. uh, Sorry, back to your park beyond. Wait, wait, park beyond. I was pretty much done, but. All right. Go ahead, Nick. Wait, what's the name of this? The game? Yeah. Park Beyond. Okay. Sorry. Go. Yeah. Park so the game Beyond. is called... Back on the Ranch. There we go. Back that was a delay ranch. tactic so that I could yeah. click the button. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Makes me any... miss Kitty. Yeah. She got like a lot. Go say oh, hi yeah. in his stream. Twitch.tv slash Kitty Kisses. With and Z's. if you're filling Streaming out a bingo, most mornings, I think. If you're filling out a bingo card for this episode, you can definitely check off Marcus interrupts Nick or Atrax. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and Division Two, that one's already oh, yeah. been mentioned as well. Right in the intro. We need to find a randomizer for that so it gives people random cards. Yeah, I know. Maybe, I wonder if we could set up a Discord bot for that. I'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, <laughs> if there are some <laughs> roller coaster loving nerds out there. Go check out Park Beyond. Throw it on your wish list. Buy it on sale if you don't want to pay, pay full price for it. But I'm having a great time with it. Definitely bringing back the nostalgia. And also just a good park simulator. The roller coaster building mechanics and the controls are a little bit difficult to figure out. But I feel like that's how it is with most sim and building games. You have to kind of play with the building just a little bit before you get skilled with it. Yeah, it's like weird click and drag and rotate mechanics yeah. or controls, right? Well, and especially with roller coasters, because you can tilt the track, you can, you know, yeah. have the track go up and down and different heights and all sorts of stuff. And this game has introduced a lot of really, really cool theme mechanics. So one yeah. of them is a cannon, and it'll just like shoot the roller coaster cart out of a cannon flying over to a certain part of the track and it can just catch the track later. So it's highly recommend. It's a lot of, a lot of fun, especially if you like sim games just in general. That sounds cool. Like a, like almost like a Mario Kart, the cannon, you know, how they have that, in like some of the Donkey Kong maps. But yeah. And you get launched out of a cannon. Yeah. It's, it's very similar to that. So the cannon will launch the cart and you can send test carts through to make sure that it actually reaches and so then your cannon can just fling the cart Woo! i think it's like i don't know 100 meters or something like that it's pretty far that is cool but i've been having a lot of fun trying out the new mechanics because those certainly weren't in roller coaster tycoon one way back in the early 2000s 1999 even yeah, even 99 if you go back to the first <laughs> Roller Coaster Tycoon. Thank you, Jamie. Right. <laughs> In Game of the Month news, CSGO, burr, 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 burr. it has been a bit of a player break. Not a whole lot going on in June as far as CSGO, but there are a lot of roster moves in preparation for the Blast Premier Fall Groups, which start in July, and Counter-Strike Source... Two coming very soon sometime this summer so we're pretty much just waiting for it we know that the next counter-strike major in 2024 will be on source 2 so we have a definite confirmed date like before when we'll get the game um even though at least we'll have the game by next year but we don't exactly know when it's going to be released this year still Teams are making roster moves in preparation for both the Blast Premier Fall Group starting in July and Source 2. G2, who is one of the teams that I am really cheering for, is staying together. 
I am in favor of this roster move particularly because I feel like most teams need at least a year or two to kind of gel together and at least at a professional level to get used to how each other plays and the highs and lows, how to dig out of a deficit, especially a strong deficit, how to deal with kind of a, I don't want to say a negative team environment, but when everybody's been losing for a while, how to pick yourselves up as a team and yeah. come together. I'm sure you know all about that in Division 2, Nick. I do. We did it this weekend, actually. Yeah. We were uh, we were down 0-3 to the Brooklyn Cubs in the prelims and called our way back to a 4-3 win. And look at that. Placed second in the tournament. You'll get to that later. I don't want to spoil yes. too much. But... So they're staying together. I'm happy for that move. Elige, who is kind of NA's last hope, in my opinion, one of the best NA players around, if not the best player right now. Okay. He he is moving from Team Liquid to Team Complexity, and this is significant because Team Liquid has been pulling European players, and now they have more European players than NA players, so they are technically an eu team so in order to qualify for the next major they will be going through the european rmr which is significant because team liquid is a very big name in north american counter-strike so with them moving and elige moving to complexity which is a north american team um the north american counter-strike scene is being shaken up quite a bit interesting but it'll be, yeah, it'll be cool to see. I'm excited for Liege to Complexity because I personally cheer for Complexity. I think they're my they're my favorite North American team right now in terms of uh, the players that are on that team. And the final kind of big news, Glaive, the legendary in-game leader for Astralis, who won four majors with that team, Mm -hmm. has been benched. He is no longer playing for Astralis. Wow. At least, well, he's on the bench, so he's not actively playing. Maybe he'll fill in or something. But he's been replaced by a player called Stair. I don't know a whole lot about them. But it's pretty big news for me uh, and the Counter-Strike world in general because one of my favorite groups of players was the Astralis core that obviously just completely dominated. That was... Such fun Counter Strike to watch, and it was cool to see how they used their utility and teamwork in order to just dissect maps and completely destroy opponents. Cool. So it's it's kind of sad, but we'll see what happens with Astralis. And that is that is our game of the month news. A little bit of a little bit of esports there for those. Uh, maybe a lot of people don't even know what I'm talking about, but. People moving around, all sorts of cool stuff. Get excited for esports in terms of Counter Strike because it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. There's a lot of cool roster moves and a lot of uh, exciting things to come, especially with Source Two just around the corner. Yeah, I got to say, just to cut in briefly, yeah, absolutely between, between points here. Uh, every time you write CS Two referring to like Source Two or Counter Strike Two, I uh, yeah. I think it's like my paintball gun because I shoot a Planet Eclipse CS2. So oh, my brain does funny. like a, a flip flop. And I'm like, no, no, no. He means Source 2. I I'm not it. talking <laughs> about Division 2. I'm talking about Source 2, Nick. Right, 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 right. So <laughs> Counter Strike Counter Strike is the Elden Ring of first person shooters. It is the hardest fucking shooting game I've ever played. I would say Tarkov is, but. Tarkov, I can get a kill. Like. I can't get you it. You can't like, get a kill in in Counter Strike. Rarely, dude. Like really? I'll get one, but dude, I, most of the time I I'll had peek like around five or six when we played well, the other like, night. I, I played, think the I reason, get, like, I get five or six, sure, but like, I get murdered way more than I kill. Oh, I think I, mean, the I did too. But Tarkov, not, you, know. you can play aggressive in Tarkov, but in CS:GO, being aggressive generally doesn't work out a whole lot unless you know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, and and I the style of first person shooter I play is not that style. Yeah, I'm a run and gunner where that game is more of like you got to have like a sniper mentality. 
Yeah, it's a lot of holding angles I found. Like, that's where I really got kills was, like, waiting for somebody to walk through an angle. Right. Yep. Or, like, if I swung, I had to do, I had to, like, get a headshot. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. Yeah, and I'm so used to, like, pray and spray. That's what makes it so hard. But it's fun as fuck. It's just the Elden Ring of first-person shooters. Yeah, you jiggle around a corner to see if they're there, try to bait out some of their shots, and then swing around when you think they're not prepared for you, and just, bah! One right. tap to the head, wrecked. I did. I did try to do that. It didn't work because I didn't hit my shots. But, <laughs> but I did. I did. Try. One of these days. Yeah, we're I'll gonna keep make playing. a CS:GO I, player out of you, Nick. I uh, yeah, my arm could definitely be twisted, but I'll get to that in a second. But first, I want to hear about what you had going on. You got going on in this last bullet yes. point here. It. So I've been really excited to talk about this. Or I, I was going to talk about it a little bit last week, but I'm kind of happy that I waited because I got to play the game just a little bit more. Two weeks ago, the PR rep for Iceberg Games reached out to me and offered me a review key for a game called Doomblade. And I've got a little excerpt here for what Doomblade is all about, and I'm going to try and read it in my most epic voice that I can because that's what we're all about here on the Working Class Nerds. <clears throat> Deep underground, Gloom Girl discovers Doomblade, a sentient weapon hell-bent on escape after eons in chains. Together, Doom and Gloom embark on a vengeful quest to unlock the powerful abilities and destroy the Dreadlords once and for all in this 2D action Metroidvania. Aw, yeah. Sold. Wait, this sounds like it's right up Marcus's alley. It's a lot of fun. I accepted, of course... Accepted the review key, played it. It is a ton of fun. Like the excerpt says, it's a Metroidvania 2D hack and slash game. I've been playing for about three hours, and I'm about I'm about twenty. Little. I am about twenty one percent of the way through it, uh, according to the little game thing. Yeah, you've progressed twenty one percent of the way. I really like it. You can fill out the map. It gives you a little map you can fill out. You get new powers, which let you go back to places you've already visited and find new treasures and other cool unlockables, more damage, more health, things of that nature. And you can also unlock areas that you previously couldn't access. So uh, one of the powers that you get relatively early on in the game is the ability to shoot these little, like, electric balls. And so then you can fire them to hit little wall panels that will unlock doors or move a lift so that you can now access a new area and a new boss. Highly, highly recommend. I give it 8.5, 9 out of 10. The only reason I don't give it 10 out of 10 is just because I haven't played a game to where I could compare it. So maybe some people out there would be like, oh, well, this game is clearly, you know, just they're ripping off this game and this game is a lot better. uh, You don't have the frame frame of reference. Yeah, exactly. I don't have that frame of reference. But I recommend it. 15 bucks on Steam. So I'm watching it right now live on Steam. The Doomblade, Doomblade developers are streaming it right now. Oh, no kidding. And I'm watching the gameplay. So it's for me, do you guys remember the PlayStation platformer um, Sackboy? What was that called? Little Big Planet. Yeah. 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 So it, it, the platforming kind of reminds me a little bit of that. It's definitely a Metroidvania. Um, The movement is incredible. He like, dashes and really fast and he does crazy attacks so like you can almost like float in the air for a while to like attack uh enemies or she whoever whatever the main character is um and i'm watching her do all of these things and it's very fast paced so you're covering a lot of ground quick where like a castlevania game you know you're you're covering ground, but you're walking. In this game, you're mostly jumping and sprinting and dashing. Um, yeah, it, it's a point and click, so you can you move your mouse to click an enemy, and then that at- you will attack, and you oh, dart no to controller that enemy support? to attack. There is controller support. I haven't oh, played yeah. it with a controller yet. 
Interesting, because that's honestly, if I was going to play it, that'd probably be how I would play it with a controller. With a controller, yeah, I, I, yeah, Ugh, not a PlayStation controller. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I was just trying to elicit that reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marcus knows what's up. Yeah. No, for the record, I actually do prefer an Xbox controller, but Xbox I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to pay. No, you, know, you buy would you when you have a PlayStation Five? I get it. I, I have a PlayStation yeah, Five, and I can just plug my PlayStation Five controller in. And I don't play that many games that use a controller anyway. So, so yeah. I um I haven't the last Metroidvania game I absolutely fell in love with was the true love is Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and nothing has ever came back to that for me. Yeah. The one game that came close, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. I bought some crazy collector's edition of it at PAX like 10 years ago with Nick. Uh, what was oh, the name I, of that I, game? It's like Key something? No. No. I, I'll, I'll just walk over and get it, find it. It's literally on oh, my shelf. Go. Back in a flash. And they've been updating it in the way this game was, and I don't know if this is, like when you you're meant to die... But when you die and come back, you still have your stuff, um, some of it, and it's easy to go go back and get if you like lose some of it. Where this, this game one, just if if you die, nothing, you just go back to your previous save point. Yeah, so this is like yeah. your standard issue. But I'm looking at it; the game's beautiful. It's bright. It's vibrant. You are correct, a hundred percent. This game is up my alley. Yeah. 15 and, bucks Steam Epic G- GOG, which I believe is, I, I don't know. I think it's just GOG.com. Yeah. Honestly, like, for me, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to play, uh, like, I'm not going to buy a game on Epic or GOG. Yeah. Yeah, just Dead to Cells. Oh, Dead, Dead cells. cells! Yeah, dude, I love that fucking game. Yeah, that's a good game. Yeah, so you got you bought the uh, signature edition at St- at PAX. I don't think it's ever even been opened. No, because mm. I downloaded it because I didn't want to open it. Don't open it. Yeah, don't open that. There's no plastic on it. I didn't take the plastic off. Oh, then it's been opened. Well, no, it hasn't because everything's like perfect in here. Oh yeah, then just, don't open it. I'll just close. Yeah, the don't plan. open it, Nick. Yeah, don't open that. I didn't open I it. I downloaded everybody. it. He didn't open it. It's never um, been opened. But anyway, I love I that game. was touch it. But in like <laughs> the other one that I really want to play that I get, I guess I could reach out to the developers is um, that Gal Guardians. I should play this Doom Blade game. I should yeah, buy this should. game. A hundred percent. Do it. It's, it's really worth it. I believe that they said they were aiming for a slightly shorter game. I don't know where okay. I heard that, but I feel like I got that vibe. Oh, it so it's demo. not meant to be, you know, super, super, Rats super large. Wish list. It's a, it's a, I believe it's a small developer as well. Who did you so, talk to from the developers? Let me look up their name. Well, either way. Um, it was the PR rep. I know that. Okay. PR right. at Iceberg. Yeah, I I would love to play this game, and we would love to have you. Oh no, wait, that's later. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, oh, Metacritic would. is giving it eighty one. <clears throat> it's got a join Doomblade Discord. That's pretty cool. Fly and slash two D Metroidvania is how. Yeah, it's that's a good way to put it. As. It's beautiful though. What's it's that really, other platformer really or uh, something of the light? What game? Ori, Ori of the Ori Light. Ori in the. Yeah, or in the Will of the Wisp. I think. Yes, like the Benny color the scheme, the blind light. Yeah. yeah, the color scheme. That's what it reminds me of. It's very bright and vibrant and detailed. This game is yeah. beautiful, and it like, has different biomes too. Like there's a there's mushroom people in it, and then you go into another area, and it's more roboticy. Really, really people. well done. Last love Thursday, junk. they released a patch. They added in map markers, and they also added speed running tools. So okay. they, you now have an in-game timer that you can use to track your run. And also, they tuned the save times to show more accurately the actual game time. So, like, when you die, when you quit, when room changes are happening, 
they've adjusted it so that the time measures more accurately. So it's also designed to be, you know, for speed running too, if you're into that sort of thing. Sure. Cool. Pretty rad. Yeah. I got to shut I this also, off because I won't stop watching it. Yeah. Before we, before we stop, I have three main highlights that I've really taken from this game. Uh, the okay. first one, the sound effects slider actually plays random sound effects when you're moving it. It doesn't just make like when you click it, it's not like, oh, and then oh, it's just cool. quiet, you know? So it actually, yeah. as you're moving it, it makes the attack sound, which I really like. I think developers should do that more because I'm adjusting my sound effects sliders all the time and having to like constantly click it to get sound to play. So I see or hear how loud it is. Yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of rough. So I thought Wait, that was really, what really What does cool. the attack sound sound like? Is that like Link grunting? Hey, yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's just like swords clinking back and oh. forth. Okay. But generally when you when you do like a sound effect slider, it'll be the attack sound, you know. Ah. Uh, uh, all that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Ah. Uh, oh. Uh. <laughs> and uh, uh we've that's already going talked... in the intro. Oh, for sure. We talked about it a little bit more or a little bit earlier, but the point and click to attack and move, I really, really like. I think it's super cool. I haven't played a whole lot of point and click games like this outside of maybe Osu. The animations and the music play really, really well together, and the cutscenes are really solid. There isn't a whole lot of voice acting, but it's enough to get the job done. You know, I, right. I don't think that the game really needs a whole lot of voice acting. I think text is very, very sufficient. Uh, and the last thing, boss fights, they're not really difficult in terms of like Dark Souls or something else like that. I can usually beat them in one to two tries, but I never know when a boss fight is going to happen. Like sometimes maybe I'll walk into an area and I'm like, oh yeah, there's there's probably a boss here. But other times I'm just, oh, hey, what's down this area? Oh, my God, it's a boss. There's a boss fight here happening now, which is really, really cool. I like the kind of surprise boss fights. Uh, so I highly recommend the game. Nerds, go out there and buy it. Doom Blade, available on Steam, $15 USD. And, yeah, I, I, I thought that was great. The Hell final yeah. thing, my Twitch return... I mentioned oh, it yeah. in the intro. June 30th, next Friday, we're going to be playing Elden Ring. Community voted Elden Ring. I said Sekiro, Elden Ring, or Dark Souls 3. And the community wanted Elden Ring so that I could prove to Marcus that it's really not that hard. Well, so just to put this... Pre let's, <laughs> let's put preference on... <laughs> Woo, yeah! <laughs> Go, Adrian. You know what? <laughs> You know what? Because <laughs> Nick did that, your next game, Nick, should be Elden Ring. All right. I'll play Elden Ring. We'll do it together. Maybe well, see, but no, like, month, see month, you guys got to understand. So the other day, Atrax was playing Elden Ring, so he was practicing. So he's okay. practicing getting Dark ready Souls to his 3. stream. Well, whatever. You're practicing getting ready so you don't get your shit pushed in. But you've also already beat Elden Ring. So, That's like, true. yes, you're going to make it look easy because you've already played these games and you understand the mechanics. You're talking to a guy who's played an MMO for 10 years and played first-person shooters only. And, like, I, I'm i old. I just I just guess I can't figure it out. Yeah. Well, Which I think really I, bothered. I was going to say, for I would be the better, like, barometer then. Yeah. Yes. I think yeah. you'll struggle, Nick, and you're going to say it's hard as fuck and you're going to get frustrated. But well, I similar think to Jedi Grandmaster on. It's like in, a thousand times harder than that. No, I know, but like it's the same. Yeah, it's, same preference. It, I don't know. Thing. It might be easier because Elden Ring one's way better. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say it's probably easier because at least the hitboxes are like red in registering properly and stuff the well right but the insane. other thing about elden ring the the thing that we're not talking about is every time you die it sucks ass because you have to go backwards like and you have to do it all over again and if you don't go back to your spot you lose all the shit that you had so like that, there's 
Clone definite Wars downsides like in Jedi on Grand Master. When you die, you just respawn at that checkpoint. Yeah, but you still lose all your, your XP. And you have to go kill that enemy to get your XP back. Right. Oh, At least well, hit, hit, hit the enemy. can pick it up off the floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But either way, my point is Atrax is going to destroy the game. Like, yes, he's going to die, but he's already like he's already pro gamer. So it's not he is going to make it look easy. I, yeah. And the Probably. only way I, I will say if I only played that game only for a month. Like, only. No Destiny, no other game, no CSGO, no nothing. I'm sure I could understand the mechanic. Yeah, oh, I for agree. Sure. But it's not, we're not, you could but when it. we're making fun of you, we wouldn't, we're not going to say all that. Well, no, I'm, no. I, I'm defending. <laughs> it's not going to be logical. Wait, right. no, I don't expect you two fuckers to be logical. <laughs> but I'm saying I'm talking to myself because you don't know how much it bothers me that I do love the game. But I suck so bad at it that, like, all I think about when I, like, think about, like, that where my character is sitting right now at that troll, you know what I think about? How awesome the game is. And then I think instantly how bad I want to smash my brand new controller in half. What's funny, too, is, like, I'm going to get past that in a stream on on Friday. In the first stream? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, this is the troll Marcus died. Do all right later. Yeah. But... But again, <laughs> but you've already played. Yes, right. it is. And honestly, I'm just happy you're coming back to streaming. Like one day a week, I feel like almost like Nick and I back in the day podcasting once every two weeks. Like there's no excuse yeah. why we couldn't do it. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, we're only on episode 203 because we did it every two weeks. But that's why the show has 203 episodes right. for you. Like you've played these games. So like. You're going to dominate, and it's just going to make me angry. Although, I will say, maybe after Elden Ring, I'll do Dark Souls 3, because I still haven't beat it yet. But see, I think if you put that in the Discord, that you've never beat Dark Souls 3, everybody would have said, play Dark Souls 3. Yeah. That could be. 100%. Play as, play as because everybody picked Elden Ring yeah. just so they can make fun of me. Right. right. And that's hundred percent smile. It. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. That's the only reason. Absolutely. See, there are a few this... things that we value more here at Working Class Nerds. There are a few things we value more than community engagement. And that's the community engagement we're, uh, we're really looking for, just trolling Marcus. Yeah. So get in <laughs> on the trolling. Spam all of his different socials and channels with chickens and waffles and... Elden Ring memes. Exactly. And Marcus, while that happens, why don't you tell us what you've been up to? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I've been having fun with stream. I will say that when I play Destiny, I have fun. Yep. But I feel like I'm falling into a rut with the game. Okay. Like, like the Sunday night raid team is fucking awesome. Like I'm enjoying that because people are learning raids. We're having fun and like, we're getting through content like slowly, but surely. And we do it at a different level than everybody else. Right. Yeah. Excuse me. I was burping. Oh, I fucking hate you. And, um, what are you talking but about? I saw the waffle you just posted. You fucking Wait, I dick. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, exactly. Fuck off. Anyway, um, so <laughs> it might it might come down to where, like, I'm just going to become a variety streamer and just play the games that I want because, like, that game we just looked at, Doom Blade. Doom Blade. Like, I yeah. would love to play Doom that for Blade. a night. Like, I do, like, hearing this about Elden Ring, like, I would like to play it. And I know the only way I can play it is if I um, push myself to not play other games. And there's a lot of other games I want to play. So, and I've said this a million times. I don't have. I'm beating a dead horse. Anyways, moving on. 
Uh, but Clan Night, the past two weeks have been really fun. Two weeks ago, we had a great showing of people. Um, it's just been fun. And it's been really fun uh, doing this new seasonal story stuff with John and Doritos. Um, Wait, John and who? Doritos. <laughs> Do you mean Doritos? Doritos. Oh. <clears throat> um, excuse me. Yes. Um, but all that positivity was ruined this week. Okay. So we did this week's story content, or I did. I did it on my Hunter because I owed a Hunter stream. Yeah. And so I'm up to date on the story on my Hunter and my Warlock. But we got a cutscene that gave us, like, the backstory to the witness, which is, like, the big, big baddie. Okay. But the story that they gave us should have been released with the fucking expansion that came out in February. Like, yeah. we should have gotten the stories that they told then, and they're releasing it into this season, which I'm kind of like, I'm over it. I feel like I'm finally being used by a game. Like, I remember how I felt with SWOTOR a little bit, how, like, I was subscribed to a game where only to do operations. Yeah. Like that was the only reason to sub to the game. And I felt like almost used a little bit, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And now I feel like I'm being used by destiny a little bit. Like there's content and sure they're giving it to us, but everything costs money, right? Everything extra. And if you're not buying the deluxe edition, you're, or the, the, the mega deluxe edition with the season annual pass where you get all the seasonal stuff, blah, blah, blah. And it's just, I don't know. I feel like this expansion, they just threw it at the shit at the wall and they were like, hey, here you go. It's a half told story because we're going to make a lot of money next year when the game ends. You know what I mean? And we yeah. announced Destiny 3. That's pretty much how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Um, but either way, that's that's pretty much my uh, my gripe right now. The last okay. thing is I am really excited for this Saturday. Um, I'm going to be playing some CSGO. I'm going to be playing some SWOTOR. I'm going to play a bunch of games uh, on stream. Like, even if it's for an hour each, I don't care. Uh, I'm just going to get into a bunch of different stuff that night. And just have some fun, which by the Listen, time you guys hear this, Saturday will have already passed. Well, no, there's a good like I'm not busy tomorrow night, so I could probably edit this thing. Um, when I don't have Friday night activities, the podcast goes up. When I do yeah. have Friday night plans, that's when the delay starts, and I'm usually doing paintball or something. And you hear you that know. Friday night activities? Yes, just general, general activities. Of no specific oh, nature or origin. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, it's uh it's been good. Busy with work and uh I'm excited to hear about this again from Nick. Are you gonna ask me what I've been up to? Uh, I was Nick, just gonna what have say you been up to this week, man. Thanks, Atrax. I'm so happy you asked. So uh <laughs> so I went to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania this past weekend. To play in the NXL Mid-Atlantic Major, which is a paintball tournament, in the Division 2 bracket. Um, Division 2! <laughs> Bingo! Oops. Uh, so, uh, it was it was great. Uh, we ha drove down there, which I don't like, but that's about, like, it took us about five and change hours or so. Um and that's about my cutoff for like distance for driving versus flying. Like when you get to five, six hours, that's like, that's my cap. Like if it's, if it's seven hours away, I'm flying. Let me yeah, ask you a question. Well, that's just me. Yeah. How many times did you pee on a five hour drive? Three on the way down. I would fucking kill you. Why? <laughs> Three times. Yeah, yeah dude. That's yeah. That's that was too actually many not times, a lot, man. Well, that wasn't dude, a lot, dude. I'm telling I mean, you. if I was at home, I, I would have peed more frequently for five than that. hours one time. You get one stop in the middle. Yes, exactly. 
Oh uh, no, that's yeah, no, that's not how that for like that would for work like for gas me. Dude, and that means he, he dude, dude, that means he's dry, stopping every hour. You drive every, an hour. Hey, we made every, sixty miles. Like I got hour pay. and a half. Yeah, yeah, every hour and a half. That's normal. No, so, <laughs> for me, yeah, and I drink a gallon of water a day. For me, it vastly depends I'm on pretty behind today. how many. Since we've gone down this rabbit hole, for yeah. me, it vastly depends on how many people. I have that are available to drive the car. So for, okay. for me, it's like I could go maybe eight hours before going crazy by myself. And then every four hours I add a person. So like 12 hours, I'd want another person and then maybe 16 or so add yeah. a third. And then 20 hours is like the limit. Cause I, I want to stay someplace after driving all day. Yeah. No, agreed. I also, yeah, even as a passenger, I don't like driving further than that. You know, even just sitting there in a car sucks ass. I, I'm never bothered by it because I just watch something, download some movies, whatever. Just consume love, the content. I love being in a car. Me too. Like, I, I went, watch one stuff, of the best so. trips I've ever been on was when me and the fam drove to Florida. And, like, it was so, such an awesome experience. You, like, pull off the highway, you see bullshit. Like, you're yeah. just cruising on the open road. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I fucking love it. When, and, but see, like, the difference between me and Nick is the adventure of the drive for me is awesome. Okay. Nick could give a fuck about the adventure getting there. He just wants <laughs> yeah. to be there and go to the bar there. Right. That's fair. And also, don't forget, when I'm a pastor, I get crazy car sick ever since I was a little kid on top of the, you know, vertigo shit problems I have now. But, um... I can't like watch stuff or read in a car. MRNA. So uh, my, yeah. so my. Otherwise, I'll get wicked car sick. But um, you just ah. have to listen to like hours and hours of Audible. Yeah. Or or yeah. But at at a certain point, how many hours can you listen to Audible in a row? Or you know what I mean? Honestly, you see the the white lines. I well, could, like three I or four. To, I can I actually can answer that. Can, so I'm gonna answer that. Twenty three yeah. and a half hours. There so you go. I drove book, driving to Florida. So we drove from Mass to Florida, and we spent. Yeah. Well, we made it to Georgia the first day. Wow! Because like the kids, yeah, dude, I'm a machine. So oh, I know that. <laughs> but I listened to the first like two Harry Potter books, driving down and back. Yeah. I had both earbuds in, and I was just cruising. The kids were going crazy in the back. Didn't give a fuck. Like. Mommy's back there. She's got you, kid. You're just listening. Dun, Mr. Dun, Potter. Dun, 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 yeah. Oh, dude. Dun, being dun, being dun, in a car dun, dun, in 2023, dun. just chilling on the road is yeah, wonderful. Dude. It yeah. is. And it's also magical, too, to see how, like, the different states, because each state has somebody that does, like, a different style of text and drive. Like, okay. North Carolina, these fucking people have the, their phones, like, in their lap, and they're driving, looking down at their <laughs> titties or their balls, right? But then you get to Georgia, and they're holding their phone on the steering wheel, so it looks like they're driving, but they're holding their phone with their hand on oh the steering God. wheel. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. these people got to do this texting and driving and watching YouTube videos. It's fucking great. Like... Dude, go to, I, I watch it, YouTube videos while I'm driving all the time, but I don't have my f hand on the phone. It's mounted. Do you, Nick, do you have YouTube premium? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I watch so much YouTube, it's, it's worth it for me. Yeah. Yep. Same. Yeah, it's 12 YouTube, bucks a month? Yeah, something like that. It might even be 15, but it's worth it. I, I watch hours and hours of YouTube stuff all it's the time. It's $11.99 a month. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, whatever. Ad but, free but, but necessity. I do the, I did the um, 1999 version for the family. family. So now okay, I, yeah. I just did it. So now, like, you get five logins. So basically, everybody's going to have it commercial free. Oh, that's nice. nice. Like, you know, the worst is you're like listening to a beat or a mix or something or a show, and it's all no, like, sorry. do you have problems with like, erectile dysfunction? And you're like, what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. This just ruined right. my old. Vibe. Right. My like, mop is incredibly dusty. I yes. need the insert mop that wants to mm -hmm. give us money and sponsor the show here. Yes. Yep. Like, <laughs> Atrax's videos are always like, do you not like ants? Then this chemical is for you. <laughs> Squash your ants. 
yeah. with it's this product. Raid on steroids. Yeah, this yeah. is it's super anti-way. Anti-way. Yeah. This is Raiden, named after the god of electricity from Mortal Kombat. Rated okay. A for actually ants. kills ants. Ants. Um, I love this long sidebar that we've gone on. But I will say, longest road trip that I ever took, 17 hours. I was the only driver. I had two of my friends with me. Uh, yep. From here to Six Flags, straight shot, just me, 17 which, hours. I was Which Six Flags? Uh, Magic Mountain in Southern California. Oh, wow. Okay. That's yeah. far. Holy shit. So it was it, it was seventeen hours. We left at like two AM. We got there at five or something like that. Damn. It was it was a long drive. Road roller coasters for two days, slept the next day, and drove back. Sheesh. Seventeen hours. But it was a great trip. Got to ride roller coasters for two days straight. You know, you bring up a good point and uh we're getting pain pile. Back I was going to say, uh, speaking of good trips, how was your trip? <laughs> so, circle, that's what I mean, circling back to my trip. I will say the five and change six hours, excuse me, on the way down is probably like 30% as annoying or painful as the five and a half, six hours on the way back. It's the, the trip back from those long drives is what really sucks. Like on the way there, you have all the excitement of the trip to like kind of like emotionally feel you. But like the drive home, I'm just like oh, this is fun. the whole time, you know, just a grumpy. It depends. Mess. On you how have to much be the grumpiest person home. ever. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like you're just if like I, yeah. I, I just I also don't like driving. Like I don't find it enjoyable. Well, you know? that's, if I have to that's go to work is. the next day, I'm upset. But if it's like oh, I got the next day off, we could just have this whole day to just travel. That's a good point. I had to work the next day, so I was grumpier about it. Hmm. I couldn't just look look forward to my my chill the next day, you know. You couldn't just enjoy the fact that you placed what in division two? Second <laughs> Division two oh. second place. Um yeah, I, I wish it was gold, but we, we tried. So anyways, talking speaking of that weekend, um we stayed in a casino nearby the field. The field is actually it's kinda cool. It's a like 45 minutes north of actual Philadelphia. It's in Royersford, but um, basically the NXL, the, the paintball league, rents this farm from a farmer, and they grew grass on the farm specifically for the paintball fields. So, like, and then the big Is it in the Amish like, country? I don't think so. Um, okay. But, yeah, then uh, the, the fields that you parked in were all corn. It was interesting. But we, we stayed at a casino that was nearby. I did not win anything. I'm not a big gambling person. I uh, I started with $100 playing blackjack. I got up to 160 And then I lost a few hands and got down back to like 80 bucks. And then I won and got to 110 and called it quits after like a half hour. And then I lost that uh, $10 that I was up by on uh, slot machines because one of my teammates had never played slot machines before. So I was like, oh, I'll sit with you. And then, of course, I was gone. So I stayed in the casino. I won $0, but I also lost $0. So I'll take that. Um, Storm and Norman, my father, uh, also came with me, which was great. Um, that means we got our own hotel room, which, mean, which meant that uh, I had my own king bed and he had his own king bed to our respective selves. That was sweet because usually in a paintball trip, you're like sharing a bed with somebody. Or, you know, it's a twin bed or something. But, um, so it's nice to, like, actually have, like, room to spread out and stuff. Um, selfishly speaking, I think that's probably the best I have ever played, um, at a paintball tournament. In that tournament. I played really great. Um, not just to be a sort of, I don't know, selfish for a second, but um, it, I really am proud of myself. It was really great. But also, as a team, that's definitely the best at you know, I I've ever done um, second place overall. And honestly, if we had more time before the finals uh, in between our semifinals and finals match, I think we would have won because we were, we had to rush. It was a whole thing, but, um, but yeah, the finals were played on the pro field, which means we were on the webcast. So if you have a go sports login, uh, go sports.com is the website that hosts all the paintball webcasts. Um, you can watch the finals match. I only play one point in the finals, but, uh, it's still pretty cool to see see you know people you know. Is it was 
Is okay. there a non Go Sports option, or do you need to create an account to watch you play? No, I think you have to create an account and stuff. But I can probably like rip the video out of, off of there illegally and you should. post it or something. I don't think that's illegal. You paid for it, and you're not selling it to people. You're just going to post it in the um, in the Discord. I'd have to yeah. do like a, pri- a well, private YouTube link or something, probably. Or right? maybe a maybe a watch party. This oh, yeah, weekend, yeah. we can, can we do, a, can watch do a, a private watch party. Whatever we can figure out that is uh, <clears throat> very much legal and right. and, <laughs> and, and by the book the, and in the terms of copyright and fairness, we don't want to step on anybody's toes. But I personally really want to uh, watch you play, and if sure, I can man. even find some YouTube highlights or something, uh, get in touch with us. Let's uh, let's figure this out. Awesome. Uh, you can also check out my Instagram, where, which will have all the photos and stuff that we took, which of which there are a lot. Um, that's Nick underscore Vern on Instagram. Uh, but yeah, so finals were on the pro field. That was really cool because I knew you know there's cameras everywhere and announcers. I can't hear the announcers while I'm on the field, of course, but the crowd having a crowd while you're playing paintball is pretty cool. Like. I haven't had I had that in college, but it was mostly just other college students counter coaching and like yelling the wrong codes at you. So like it I was used to tuning them out, but I haven't played paintball with a big crowd like that or like played a sport in general with a big crowd like that since probably high school, like high school football. Because when I when I lined up at the box, I was in front of the bleachers where some of my friends were. It was Fernando, Charlie and Nico. But Fernando and Charlie in particular were like, yeah, bro! Let's go, Vern. That's all you could hear is him yelling me, about me. It's like, you're so fucking sexy, Vern. Woo! I'm like, oh, my God. So you have to, like, actively tune them out, you know, and be like, I have to yeah. sports. Right. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that was weird to, to have to do that. But then also, to, it was it was interesting because similar to, like, being on a football field or something, like, yeah, it's like you're like, oh, my God, this is the pro field. And then, because the bunkers are all different than the divisional fields, but not different shapes, but different colors. And um, it's a little surreal to be like, I'm on the pro field. And then you get to your spot and you're looking at stuff and you're like, yeah, but this is exactly the same as every other paintball field I've played. And it's just a paintball field. You know what I mean? It's just a football field. The line, you know, 10 yards is still 10 yards. You know, a Dorito is still a Dorito. So. Dorito! (laughs) Exactly. Um, so it, it was it was cool to like sort of settle in before the point started and then you know and then go and play and I did pretty well that point I shot somebody uh across the field early in the in the point and then got up the Dorito side but uh I didn't realize that their snake player had also gotten way up the field and he shot me in the pack he just clipped one of my pods so mm. um had I realized he was that far ahead I, pr- I would have stopped I got to my bunker first, so I would have stopped and looked inside for him. But I was I was on the tape, um, the Dorito side of the Dor- the Dorito way up the field, to like look to continue forward to get a better angle. But I didn't realize, and he clipped me. But it's all good. Um, yeah, it's it's really interesting going back to work on Monday after that, driving back from Pennsylvania, um, Sunday night after we played in the finals and stuff. It's hard to get like a non paintball person to understand what that was all like. One hundred percent. Like one hundred percent. You like, people, people have, have no, no fucking clue. clue. No, no clue. idea. Yeah, yeah, I just played I got second place in a tournament and they're like, Were you the sniper? Right. <laughs> Were you wearing a full ghillie suit? How much camouflage do you wear? Exactly. Oh Breaks were in billiards, not paintball. Yeah, or like yeah. Wait, what did you play? Ping pong? Like, yeah. Oh my God. Well, no, and and the other thing too is what people don't understand is like I've played a lot of team sports before. Yeah. In my life, but nothing ever has been as passionate or like camaraderie based as a paintball team. Yeah. Like when you're true. in that pit and that match is going on. Like nothing outside of that pit matters at all. Yeah. Like your sister could have just had a baby. You could give a fuck until that clock says zero, zero, zero. Right. Well, I mean, like actually one of my teammates had something serious happen while we were there. His um, grandmother passed away Saturday night 
he didn't tell any of us until we were done on Sunday. But like, that's one of those things where like, he, I mean, he's a very emotional person anyways, but, um, yeah, it's one of those things. It's like, it's so intense that you you can shut everything else out, you know? Yeah. It's also it was at that point for him and a big negative thing like that. It was probably an outlet for those emotions too, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just focus on the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely, uh, like do some, some channeling of the dark side of the force when I play paintball. Like <laughs> my teammates say that like, like I'm clearly a very positive person all the time. If you've listened to the show at all, but my, there's a couple instances where I'll, where I'll get mad or things that make me mad. And my teammates like want me to be mad all the time because I play better. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny they're like palpatine like yes release your anger do it uh, uh, right. <laughs> dump Shoot. the entire pod all uh. over cwe power <laughs> right <Good. laughs> yes just shoot them off the field yes um well <laughs> what i will say is so since since nick did that and like I saw it like yeah. I haven't watched paintball in a very long time, except like, for like clips, yeah, but not a whole match. Yeah. And like seeing the pits. Yeah. Dude, it was like, cool being the pro pits, too. They get three tables. We usually only get one. Um, <laughs> wow. Sorry. Just a quick sidebar. <laughs> yeah. No, no. It's, it's your That's moment. Awesome. I've cleaned my gun. <laughs> I ordered okay. a pod pack. Okay. Um, I actually rode the Peloton yesterday. Nice. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, my too. family knows that I'm playing, and okay. it's in the comeback is real because like Carrie's like, oh no, and I was like, oh yes, <laughs> it's coming back, and she's like, you're not going to like, you're not flying all over the place. I was like, well, in March I am. Yeah, because the first event of the uh, 2024 Vegas. season yeah, is in Las Vegas. <laughs> so I'm Nick really and me alone in Vegas? <laughs> We're going to die. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be bad. I'm definitely taking a couple days off after I'm that. I'm coming home Tuesday. Yeah, me too. That's what I mean. Because the I'm last not... day, Monday to Sunday, Monday, is, Sunday I'm sleeping. Is, yeah, <laughs> Sunday night is going to turn into Sunday, Monday morning. <laughs> Monday afternoon. Monday after, right? <laughs> so, so, anyways, um, so yeah, it was that was crazy. It was a great, really, really great weekend, and it was amazing to go through this really cool, positive experience while also having my dad there, which was great because he played paintball with us too. He's been on the show a couple times, of course, but um, yeah, he played paintball with me until I went to college, pretty much. So it was up through Division Four uh, local tournaments, which is you know, substantial. So he knows what he's talking about and he knows what's going on in the field. It's not like he's just, you know, has never done it before. He's been in the shit. So he knows what to look for. It, it was cool. Actually, I will say just to continue with this, um, my coach recognized that because, it, you know, there's other, other people's parents have been around for different stuff at practices or what actually, uh, the Stanton parents were there too, but, um, they don't know. They've never played paintball. So my, when my dad got there, he's like, we were watching, um, when we first got to the field Thursday before we played, some pro- professional teams are practicing and we were just watching them practice and you could see my dad like looking at like the bunker ankles to like see where they're shooting at and like one pro is shooting a bounce shot and they're like oh that's how where it goes okay so these like could see him scoping it out and he was like oh you know what's going on like okay cool it was like he got a lot of uh like street cred almost it was fun but anywho on monday after i went back to work and all the old ladies in the office were like how was the ping pong uh <laughs> I streamed some I streamed some CS:GO on Monday and that was fun. Um I don't think I'd play I play a little bit of CS:GO but not a lot. And I, I don't know that felt like the first real session where I like played a couple matches in a row. Um I just finished off stream with that. And it was really fun. I enjoyed that. I got some kills. Um it was I don't know, you can it's very all the controls feel very clean. Like it's somewhat limited because I you know it's a little clunky ish. Because it's like just an older game, but compared to Call of Duty, where it's like that feels it's more simple. fluid. It's yeah, simpler, it's si- simplified. Yeah, all, yep. all the all the movements simplified. But the then, idea like, is the moving recoil left pattern. to right instead of like like all around circular motions. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
it was fun though. I enjoyed it. I'm definitely gonna play more. Um, I might play that on stream. I don't know. I don't know if I have Elden Ring purchased yet or not. I'll look into that. But I'll be playing CS:GO for sure. And yeah, I enjoyed myself. Um, in terms of media stuff, at Guys Night this week, aka yesterday, uh, we watched the first episode of uh, Secret Invasion, which is the new Marvel spy drama show on um, Disney Plus. The da-da, lead character. Da-da, da-da, da-da. Yes, I don't have um, spy music. Yeah, I don't have spy music queued up. That's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but it is cool. It's Nick Fury is the main character, and who's played by Samuel L. Jackson, and so it's it's legit like a spy thriller about um, scrolls in that have invaded the Earth. I shapeshifters. Um, I was there, but I didn't see any of it. Yeah, Marcus was so tired he just fell asleep, and I don't blame him at all. But fair it was enough. Funny. Yeah, I suck less. I was probably snoring. No, you were. Story when Norman looked over at something else and was like, "Oh shit, he's out cold." And it was like five minutes into the show. <laughs> well, but it's because also, we watched Doug know, the come- Doc. Atrax's his internet is the worst it's been in a long time. Really? Why? He, he Dude, pixelated. your camera cuts in and out. It's all been blurry all day. It's been clear, but the frame rate's terrible. Yeah, it's fine. On like my he looks end. like his mouth looks like Wallace and Gromit when he talks. Yeah. Um, weird <laughs> for me oh anyway. hey real quick sidebar yeah so you know if you know me like and we work together my passion for working with people is to fuck with your car yeah like i love doing it like put up your windshield wipers when you're inside or like push in your passenger mirror so like when you go to get in <laughs> and you drive away and you look to see in your mirror and your it's fucking folded. mirrors pushed in and you're like, fuck, I need that mirror. Or like um, <laughs> push your seat forward as far as it'll go. So you go to get in and you're like, oh, I can't fit. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so I fuck with the guys I work with. But then I'm driving home and I hear this tick, 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 tick. And as I go, as I go faster, it goes tick, 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 tick. It's like ridiculous. I'm like, what the fuck did they do? So it's been or something. Well, so for years, like I thought like we've taped like duct tape signs or pieces of metal. So like when the wind is, when you're driving, it like flaps up and rattles and it makes a shit ton of noise. But when you stop, it drops down so you can't see it. Oh, that's really funny. (laughs) Right? So there's a lot of things you could do. The point is, well, I couldn't find out what the fuck is wrong with my car, my van. And I'm like, these motherfuckers. So I thought it was this one guy. And so I call him. I was like, bro, I don't know what this ticking noise is. And he's like, stop fucking with my van. Click. And it wasn't him. I'm like, this cocksucker. So I'm going all around and I'm looking all over the place and they zip tied. They put zip ties and left the long parts hanging out on my drive shaft. So when I'm driving, it's spinning, <laughs> talking, ticking, tick, 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 tick. That's way great. under and the like, car. That's funny. And, yeah. and the only reason why I know it's a drive shaft because somebody told me because I know nothing about cars. Like I am not a yeah. car guy. Like, I wish I was a car guy so I could fix my own car, but I am not yeah. a car guy. And literally, I drove home with it. And then the next day at work, I drove there. I'm like, ah, it's not so bad. And then I had to run to Rockies. And I was driving down the road, and somebody was, like, walking down the street. They did this because the thing was screaming. I'm going 45. It's going. And they saw their head whip on the sidewalk and, like, look at the van. Like, what the fuck is wrong? I'm like, oh, fuck. I got to figure this out. Sorry. That was my sidebar. That's fantastic. Well, Nick, let me ask you a question. Okay. What was a better feeling? Winning second place and, like, doing all of that or just being there with your dad and letting him share. Because, like, you could have lost day one, like, not made to Sunday. You know what I mean? But, like, still being there with, you know, Storman. Yeah. You know, I guess my question is, like, what was your favorite part about it, having him there? And then what was your favorite part of the tournament? Because getting second place is cool, but like, it's also disappointing. 
Yeah, no, it definitely is. It leaves you hungry to like fight harder and train more and stuff. But uh, no, I think the LARP, it, it's kind of tricky to say one versus the other because it's a little more nuanced than that. Like having my dad there enhanced everything that was already cool. You know what I mean? And I'll, and just brought like the the basement of like the enjoyment level way up. If that makes sense. So yes. like just like your baseline enjoyments, even if you like you said, even if you even if we went all in four and we're out of the tournament, it still would have been fun because my dad was there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's just a cool experience to share that type of thing with my dad. Like like literally World Cup we went all in four, but we had a great time. We especially on Thursday. I, I told that story already, but there was a hurricane that came through. So for World Cup, usually you play prelims Thursday, Friday, and start your um playoffs on s- Saturday. But um, you, but there was a hurricane, so it got canceled Thursday, and we just stayed at the house and watched movies and drank beer from like ten thirty in the morning till I don't even know nighttime. But <clears throat> so we made the best of it at World Cup. But no, having my dad there this weekend while we also had a great time in terms of like team stuff, uh, was just made it all that much better. So like, I don't know if that answers your question properly, Marks or not, but it does. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, our matches in the prelims, we played Power, which was uh, an emotional match for me, for me, although not as bad as Texas. But um, we were up 4-1 to one and let them come back, 4-3. to three. And that was honestly a good, like, wake-up call for us because we were like, hey, like, we we let our definitely let our foots off the gas and let them come back. You know what I mean? Like, uh, if we... It, it was like a mental reality check. It's like, hey, no, we got to, like, stay on it. And then the next team we blew out, we beat pretty handily. Who did we play the second game? Oh, newbies. No, they were no, we didn't. They were they were good. That was a three two match or something like that. Then uh, we played Brooklyn Cubs as our first prelim on Sunday, and that that's a, they're a very solid team um, as well. They we lost to them. We had a little bit of a of a revenge tour, so to speak, this tournament, which was cool. We lost to Brooklyn Cubs um, in triple overtime in Florida, so the first event in March. Uh, to that was in the corner finals and then we were down oh to three against them in our prelim match on saturday and we clawed back and then uh this might be this is tied for my second favorite moment um selfishly speaking so there's 14 seconds left it's tied three to three and prelim matches can end it in tie so both teams are essentially going right at each other because it takes basically nine to 10 seconds to just literally sprint across the field. So like 14 seconds, you don't have a lot of room. If you're going to try and go hit the buzzer, sure. you you don't have a lot of room to not be just running at the box. So right. I go up the Dorito side of the middle. I'm pretty sure I shoot their wide Dorito runner off the break. And then I turn my gun in. I shoot their. I definitely shoot their three off the break, meaning their back center player. That's two kill. No, two kills. I later learned that the wide Dorito runner was killed by my wide Dorito guy. Heads up, but um, so I kill two people on the Dorito side of the field, and then I turn back inside and see these two guys running down the snake. The first one was literally an R snake. He's running and shooting. I don't know how he didn't see me. I shot him probably twenty times. Then I turned my gun further up the snake, and I traded with the second guy. So I shot three people in fourteen seconds. And the guy, the first guy that I shot a bunch of times in the snake, just kept shooting his gun while he was already hit. And he drew a major penalty and a major penalty under one minute stops the game and is an immediate swing point. So we ended up winning the match four to three because of that, uh, nice. which is very cool. Yes. Atrax, did you turn your camera off? No. Oh, it's off currently. It's been off. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. this live video will, will return when their internet improves. But, um, it's it's so that the record if they we want to record the video it would still be smooth but um, wow but it shuts off if your internet connection is not great to prioritize that it just uh, proves so any- the point that fucking the west coast internet sucks ass yeah it's it's the real internet mine. is it- no I am I am aware how bad specifically my internet is it's been a problem I've been trying to fix for years but the current owners of the house will not <laughs> let the expanse of the internet happen okay and well, you're I, wireless right to your room you're not even wired yeah uh, that's and the wireless is like bridged from the oh jesus it's it's bad 
It's bad. Yeah. I'm aware it's bad. I'm working on a solution. Why don't you buy a mesh network? They're like 200 bucks. It'll fix your problem. We'll we'll figure it out at some point. Mesh yeah, network. Can... Google the mesh net Google mesh. Get it done. It's easy. The shit just plugs into the wall. Once you set it up, it, all you need is the uh modem that whatever provider gives you. You don't even need the wireless router anymore. You just plug these fucking points in and your internet is fixed throughout your house. Cool. Yeah. There um, we go. What was, what was I talking about? I don't know, but in AIE Paint, news... Paintball was epic, and I do want to hear about AIE. What do we got for AIE news? In AIE news, Tuesday nights, you can come play Destiny 2 with me for clan night, 9 p.m. Eastern. You don't oh, feel yeah. like playing Destiny? Atrax understands that. Come play SWOTOR. <laughs> SWOTOR's mandatory fun night is Tuesdays, 9 p.m. Eastern. You don't want to do that because, you know what, Nick is very engrossed in Jedi Survivor and not SWOTOR, then you can go on Saturday night and live out your Lord of the Rings dreams for Saturday night Lotro with Mal. Mal will take you through and help you progress your quest, start a character, whatever you want to do. Lord of the Rings is awesome. And who doesn't want to play the MMO that you can go to like level 1000 and I think you pay 20 bucks and you get like... 18 years of content like you can't even play wow. it all yeah That's it's crazy, crazy. Wow. yeah it is crazy and um if all this sounds fun to you go to aie-guild.org get our discord information in the top right hand corner of the website click that link and ask for a guild invite whether or not you play star wars old republic guild wars 2 lord of the rings online or any of the other games that we play we i'm sure we play them too i mean and we would love to have you and with that, so we've uh, we've been recording for an hour and twenty six minutes, so we're just about at Nick's pee break time. Exactly. So we'll be right back. Disclaimer: So you guys know that last week we had um, GB Marcos Nick on the show talking about fast food fairy tales, and he said he ran into an issue with Amazon for the publication of his paperback book. And it was only on the Kindle version. Well, come to find out, Amazon changed his classification to it for the book, and they thought it was about crocheting. And so they <laughs> removed the book for sale. But now it is fixed. Uh, I linked it in our podcast section of the Discord. Um, go to Amazon.com and Google Fast Food Fairy Tales. It's 10 bucks. Support a local author so he can continue to tell us those ridiculous stories. Because trust me, you want to go back to listen to episode 202. It was definitely worth it. And we're back. So today we're jumping right into working class questions. It's First, working class questions. Uh, so first things first, uh, Tarquin asks, which road trip in your life has been your favorite? Well, it's funny we talk about that now. Again, because I didn't even know that was a question when we either. had that sidebar earlier. I entirely did not read that at all. Uh, my favorite is probably the Mount Washington road trip that I went on, and I've been going on for like 20 years, because that weekend's really cool. But this, But like, road trips are fun for me because of the destination, not because of the travel. So like... I don't yeah. like any road trips for the road trip, if that makes sense. I like it because the destination. But this past weekend was pretty epic, too. So that'll be honorable mention. What do you guys think? Uh, I would say the road trip that I mentioned earlier, mostly because it was, it was just a lot of fun. Listen to comedy routines and music and almost got run off the road by a truck. Like a Nobody. giant semi made us spin out in the median. Thankfully, it was in Southern California where it's just big, open plains of nothing. So, you know, Jeez. not a big deal. We thankfully drove back onto the highway and just made about our way. But yeah, Jeez. 17 hours one way, then road roller coasters for two days, had a day to just rest and right back at it, driving 17 hours again. 
but it was a lot of fun. That was that was my best road trip for sure. Cool. Marcus? Uh I would say my favorite road trip was uh driving to Florida with my family cuz like I never did it before and I know a lot of people who have driven to Florida. So I think that was really awesome. The uh I would say the coolest road trip I ever went on was driving to Kansas City with my mom because okay. I've never seen the Midwest before. Yeah. In that light. Like I always like took a plane or like I took a bus to somewhere, but it was always like a city and like I never noticed the rural like flat land where like you could feel like you see the horizon dipping or like you know like the curvature of the earth because in so yeah so i would say the best road trip was ever like when i drove to florida with my family that was awesome absolutely awesome and i'm the opposite of nick i love the road trip the destination is awesome too but like i like the road trip getting there yeah i get such little enjoyment out of the road trip part of it that like yeah, it's all about the destination for me, but I get it. If you, I get why people enjoy that, you know? Well, it just adds to the adventure. I'm an adventurous person. You're a destination person. Yeah, I guess I don't I don't I don't mind adventuring, I think. It's just the it's just that I don't like driving and also me not being able to like do other stuff as a passenger. Well, let me ask you a it, question. You know? If you had a choice of hiking up the mountain to get to the peak or driving your car up to the mountain and having lunch earlier, you're going to drive your car. 100%. Same reason right. why I drive my car like 400 feet down the road to the breakfast place I could walk to. You know. Right, exactly. Yeah, so it, it's the same logic. There's, like, and the, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just two different di- mindsets. Yeah, totally. Like yeah, like you walking to the breakfast place, you're like, "Why would you not walk?" I'm like, because nothing about the walk is pleasant. Meanwhile, you're like, oh, I get to enjoy this walk and like be outside and, you know, right. And it's like, and it's an enjoyable thing for me. It's just like annoying. <laughs> and literally the 50, restaurant, 50. the restaurant is four houses away from Nick. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm not kidding. And he would drive there. A hundred percent. Why would I not? <laughs> In my head, exactly. it's a no brainer. It's like, yes, it's, you could walk there, but it's also such an easy drop like it's a two second drive so why would you not just do the two seconds you know but i get it um quinn also wait did atrax answer this yes he did yeah. yep quinn also asks uh what is the prettiest looking type of tree oak tree i love an oak tree hmm prettiest they're looking? big the leaves are big it's beautiful but i'm a wood answers. guy okay uh first answer is like a willow it's pretty cool. Honorable mention to cherry blossoms, but I think a Japanese maple tree is really cool looking too. With That's the what I was going to say. Japanese yeah. maple? Mm-hmm. Bonsai trees are just too broad because that can yeah. be pretty much just anything as long as it's in a tiny pot. But Bro. I, I would agree with you that Japanese maples or maybe cherry, like certain types of cherry trees when they blossom are really, really pretty too. Yeah, agreed. Marcus? So my whole life I've been told that there's a bonsai tree that grows $100 bills, but I have yet to find one. <laughs> so if you ever find one, please uh, let me know, and I'll buy it, and we can split it. You can All make a right. $100 bill out of a bonsai tree. Uh, huh. It's actually more linen than it is paper. Well, thanks for ruining it, Nick. Yeah, no Sorry. kidding, Nick. Like. <laughs> All right. Wow! Scientific Nick here. The science <laughs> police is here. Uh, oh well, technically, <laughs> it's not really wood. Yeah, it's technically, it's more. Really, it's more hemp products and cotton these days. But no, cool. um, I don't know how they make it out of. They did used to make dollar bills out of hemp, though. That was the thing. Way back in the day, they don't need hemp is the but, greatest product ever. I know. Um, I don't, don't. I'm not putting on the tinfoil hat today. I will go down that rabbit hole. Um, Quinn also asks, "What do you mean? Are, it is like hemp it is, is like no, the no, strong, it is. I agree." There's like, fuck thing. the weed. Like, fuck the drug and all that I know, bullshit. I know. I'm just I talking know. about the hemp tree itself. I know. Oh, yeah. There, there's a whole thing about, like, yeah. Henry Ford put the kibosh on hemp. Because his rival yes. was making their bumpers out of hemp, and they were literally indestructible. 
Right, and like you could take a hammer to the them cotton industry ping, was getting ping, destroyed. Ping. Right, yeah, and the, yeah, the cotton. The no, no, not Henry Ford. It was the cotton guy, the, the cotton yeah, gin. Cotton. I forget. Somebody Whatever. screwed it up and just like started the whole reefer madness thing. It's a whole. Never mind. Anyways, I'm not yeah, because, going down the rabbit hole. Well, Quinn, it's truth. <laughs> Quinn, no, asked, but it's, dude, it's 100 percent true. It's I a know, fact but, that like hemp was the greatest product ever. Like the clothing lasted forever. Like a hemp shirt lasted forever. Right. But then the cotton industry was being Rope. destroyed, and they had to ruin it because They're, yeah, that like okay, I'll just I'll just do it real. Uh, so who invented? All right, who the hell? What's the name of the guy that invented the cotton gin? Cotton gin inventor. I cannot spell. Enter. He's an inventor. Eli Whitney. I don't know, maybe it's not this guy. Somebody. So I don't remember the guy's name, but some guy, big cotton titan, if you will, um, the Elon Musk of cotton back in the back in the day, was getting killed by <laughs> hemp. And I, I'm pretty sure it's something to do with Ford too. Like they used to make bump the car bumpers out of hemp. And they were like, okay, we got to put a stop to this hemp product. Like, nobody's buying cotton for clothes and rope and all kinds of different stuff. Like, hemp was everything. It was a way better material. Um, and so they started putting out, like, propaganda and, like, paying news organizations to promote um, cannabis or hemp as this evil thing. And it's causing reefer madness. And they called it marijuana, which is, like, the name of a, a Mexican, um, like, literal weed that uh, grows like in Mexico, so it's like not e- not even the same plant, and so they called it. They coined the term, called it marijuana as this foreign thing, and they said that like different ethnic minorities were raping white women and smoking the reefer, and there's all this reefer madness stuff in the 20s and 30s, and then that's what got uh, marijuana classified as illegal because it was in all kinds of stuff, cough syrup, like it was just nor- and hemp was a normal product. And as a byproduct of that being made illegal, all hemp products were made illegal. Now, they fixed that since then, but the damage is already done, and nothing's made out of hemp anymore. There you go. And that's why cannabis is illegal in the U.S. in some places still. Um, but anyways, back at the ranch. Uh, Quinn asks, are roses overrated? Uh, oh, my God. Are roses overrated? I think so. Lavender game. Uh, oh boy, r- roses do look good, but they, d- yeah, I, like I'm not, I don't really care about flowers. I just kind of buy whatever the girl I'm buying them for likes, you know. You said lavender for the win. I have to strongly disagree. I worked at a lavender farm. That was my first job ever. Oh wow! And I got put in the still, which is basically imagine like a <laughs> honey bucket. On, t- of- on a trailer, but it's like a whole built trailer, and it's just a giant metal tube. Yeah. And I got put in the top because it was the only opening for the still, and they yeah. pitched, forked the lavender in over the top, and I had to stamp it down. Oh, my God. And then eventually when I was full- filled up enough, then I would come out, and they would shut it and run steam through it to get all the oils and good stuff out of the lavender. Oh my god. And then go into the field and it had a little hitch and so you could dump it out and scrape it out with a pitchfork. They just like maybe 20 seconds of rinsing it out and then they'd tip it back up and do it all over again in the summer so it's 90 100 Hot, degrees yeah. out. I would come home and blow my nose and it would be black from all the all lavender. The lavender. <laughs> so I strongly disagree with saying that lavender is better than roses because it is uh, not. Let me tell you. Well, uh, if if you hadn't had that experience, I think you'd like lavender more. I agree. I mean, I think pretty yeah. little, like like looking at wise roses are better because they're bigger. Like lavenders have tiny flowers, but they smell way better. Yeah, for sure. Like, smells like roses is kind of like a not great phrase. I feel like there's a lot of other things that smell better than roses. I personally love a rose. I just think it's beautiful. Yeah. If, I think for they, they a look flower, like, it's beautiful. Like, it's not overrated. Yeah. It's overpriced, but it's yeah. not yeah, overrated. That's true. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. I think that's probably one of the best looking flowers for so, sure. That, tulips, too, but they're, tulips are basically roses, but with a different stem and different colors. It's a different plant, but they're similar. You get what I'm trying to say. Uh, Quinn also asked, <laughs> if you had to pick a last meal right now, what would it be? Pizza. Uh, burger from Five Guys. Uh, and a milkshake. 
surf and turf, lobster and a steak. Nice. That would be a few. See, from five guys. I, I want to just put a little preference to my um, pizza thing. Is because if I'm getting my last meal and it's a pizza, I could get do. And there's eight slices. I could do do a slice of buffalo chicken, do a slice of mozzarella. Uh, pepperoni i could do a slice of hawaiian I, you know what i mean like customize that pizza to be like the greatest of all the tastes yeah. ever like i in the more i think about it like i love a burger i love a steak i love chicken i love scallops like i love all the food but i would say my favorite fucking food ever is pizza like it is the all-around greatest fucking thing on the planet see i feel like that about a really like gr- good greasy burger. I hear you, but I also like pizza. But I w- that's not like my end all be all. You know what I mean? I just feel like a pizza you can do everything with. So like whatever you want to spite, like you want wings, you can get a wingy buffalo pizza. You want yeah. like a-, a salad pizza, you can do margarita or do one of those ones with spinach and fig. You know what I mean? Like yeah. And balsamic vinaigrette on it. You know what I mean? Like, you can get all of the different flavors It's on a pizza. Yeah, and you can do breakfast pizza. You can do... That's what I'm saying. Like, there's enough variety to where you can make something. Like, pizza is just perfect. It's the perfect food. But I do agree. A good... uh, A really good burger is amazing. Yeah, like like Five Guys is my favorite. I can see a a case being made for In-N-Out. Although it's de- that's not my favorite. I think Five Guys blows it out of the water. But I get it. Like a good burger like that. And I actually, I've been to a lot of like quote unquote fancy burger places. And I actually prefer the fast casual. Like I like that style more than like the, like a Max burger. You know what I mean? <sighs> Which is like, it's kind of hard to compare it. Well, here's the thing. But like when my enjoyment buy, like, of that burger is better at Five Guys than at Max Burger. Yeah, and not like, that Max Burger isn't good. Like it's very good. But I'm yes. just saying. But the other thing too is when I think about like Five Guys and stuff, they're taking a ball of meat and smashing it on the thing and putting a griddle on top of it. Where like yeah. a Max Burger or your like burger joints, there might be fresh patties, but those things have been processed and they're just a patty and they throw them on. Right. They don't taste as fresh. Like a Five Guys. Burger yeah, to me fresher. tastes wicked fresh. There was a place it used to be called um, Smash Burger, and you yeah. would order like a small burger, bigger burger, or big burger, and they, yeah. it, you know, you'd get like a one pound ball that they would smash. They'd throw some salt and pepper on that bitch, like, and it was, it was fantastic. Uh, it, yeah, I it was like the five. Um, it's like the Five Guys style. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't White Hut do that? Do, uh, are those Smash Burgers or no? No. There's okay. just thin, thin patties. Thin. Got yeah. it. Okay. Um, but yeah. What about you, Atrax? Last meal. Well, he said, ch- I said surf, surf and turf. turf. Oh, that's right. But so what like, would you do? Yeah, like what are your go-to turf. sides to go with it? Two sides? Ooh. Yeah. I'm going uh, mashed potatoes and gravy for one. Good choice. Steak and sauce or like a brown gravy? I'd go brown gravy. Okay. But I, I wouldn't necessarily mix it with the steak. It's just I like brown gravy over steak sauce. Okay. And ooh. The last side maybe a really good coleslaw. Nice. Yeah, something like that. A little bit light. Because you but, can't have surf and turf without your sides. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You gotta do something on the side. Absolutely. Right. I'm not a steamed vegetables guy, so I'd, I have to go. I love vegetables. I like I French like fries. Does that count? Dude, you know what no. my favorite vegetable <laughs> is? Dude, like, I'm not kidding when I say this. I love cucumbers so okay. much because they get so big and fat, and you can just eat them whole and just In take them bite. down. Not <laughs> one bite. But, like, you can just insert it in your mouth and bite that thing, and it's so delicious. Oh, I love a cucumber. <sighs> or a big zucchini. Uh, believe it or not, if zucchini, if you take a zucchini, cut off the ends, and then cut it down the middle, and you make, like, two flat, like, halves. Like a long, cut them the long way? 
Yeah, yeah and they're like two half moons. You, do it you on can the grill. grill them face up. That's yeah, really good. Yeah. Or you put them in the oven with a little bit of breadcrumbs on the top. Yeah. All right, and I like cook to do them my grandma. Like my grandma used to make, yeah. My grandma used to make uh, that for me when I was a kid, and I loved it. Oh, yeah. Zucchini can be not really Not to be good. confused with Nick's grandma. Completely different. Yeah, not not my grandma. <laughs> just Marcus's grandma. It's the same grandma for, for the ref- record. <laughs> Our grandma on the side of the family that we're cousins on, okay? So yeah. that is also my grandmother. Fuck. But, <laughs> but um, <laughs> anyways... Uh, what the hell were we just saying? Zucchini, vegetables are good. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, what's our next question? Wait. Can I add a wor- know- wait, wait, wait. Can I add a working class question? Okay. What's your favorite vegetable? <sighs> so yours are uh, cucumber? No, my favorite vegetable is actually cauliflower. Really? Yeah. How do you like it? Roasted, steamed, raw, doesn't matter. Oh, nice. I fucking right. love cauliflower. I think... Um, do pickles count as vegetables? No. Yes. No, they do not. Wait, then what is a pickle if it's not a vegetable? It's a cucumber, which is technically a fruit, by the way, if we're getting real technical. Uh, Same wait as a, a minute. Just hold like, a, to- oh, wait, just like a tomato is also oh. fruit. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. Well, then, in that case, <laughs> I'd have to say carrots. Ooh, okay. Carrots or celery? Celery is actually very closely tied, but I can always go for pretty much either one of those two. Carrots or celery? I like carrot juice more than celery juice. I'll save my opinion on carrots for Sophie's question. That's coming up later. Um, My favorite vegetable is probably either broccoli or... um, I really like like a nice like Caesar salad from like Texas Roadhouse. But that's not a f- vegetable. Yeah, no, you're right. So I'm going to go with broccoli. Like a salad is a salad. Yeah, okay. So broccoli. All right. Yeah, I'll go with broccoli. I like broccoli a lot. I like Sorry for my sidebar question. I felt like it was time. Nobody's ever asked us that. Yeah, no, that's important information. Like what's your favorite vegetable is a good one. What's your well, favorite it's fruit? It... Oh, that's easy. Granny Pineapple. Smith apple. Yeah, no, pineapple's uh, mine. Blueberries. I love pineapple, but nothing is like a Granny Smith apple. Yeah, Granny Smith apple is like the greatest thing ever. Yeah, a nice apple is really good. Agreed. Organic. Oh, my God, Granny Smith. I could just eat the the two of them at once. Yeah, two giant, like... Granny Smith plump apples. And then you put the banana between it. Oh, it's the fucking best combo ever. (laughs) There it is. (laughs) Uh, all right, so what Scarlet asks, it's a question for me, so I was hoping one of you two would read it. Scarlet asks, question for Nick, in your paintball career, have you ever had a hero moment, da 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 coming in clutch laps moment, saving what would have been a sure loss? And conversely, what was your most embarrassing moment while on the field? Uh, and quick sidebar says, I suppose these questions could go for Marcus as well since he used to play paintball. Um, first question, have I ever had a hero moment? Uh, I would say like winning a two on one or a three on one is, was probably like a hero moment, um, where you that odds are you're, you're going to get shot there and then your team's going to lose that point. I've done that a couple times in local tournaments. I had a, not really, I kind of described a hero ish moment, um, regarding our comeback match against um, the Brooklyn Cubs earlier in the, in the episode here, where like I ended up shooting three people in the 14 second point and one of them got the major, which made us win the point. But um, that's not really like my doing like, yes, I shot the guy, but he, his like stupidity to keep playing and cheat is what got him the major penalty. And then thus that won us the point. So like, I don't think that counts, but I've not done that in an NXL moment and, and, in an NXL match per se, I have pulled off some like a four on two with one of my other teammates, Stingle, in college before, and that was pretty cool. So we we it was four on two. We shot two people. It was a two on two, and then uh, we shot the last two. That was cool, but that's not like an individual moment. Um, most embarrassing moment while on the field. I remember. So I took time off between co- finishing playing for UConn in college, and then coming back to play like you know competitively in 2020 
And I remember the first time I went out was a Wednesday night. They used to have, they still do it, but it's a lot, it was a lot more popular in 2020 because everything else was shut down. They had Wednesday night like pickup games. They called it Wednesday night fights. And um, a pro player, Billy Bernaccio, would host it and then raffle off some shit um, afterward at the end of the night. But it was really fun. I remember the first point that I went on the field, like, normally, like, in the position I play as a back player, you don't always have to run off this when the off the breaks, like, at the start of a point. You can just, you're usually shooting your gun and not going that far. But for some reason, like, the way the people were out the field, they're like, oh, like, where do you want to go? Why don't you go to the corner? I'm like, okay. And the corner is you got to run at it and slide. Well, I ran and went to slide on my knees like a baseball slide, kind of, a paintball slide, but it's closer to a baseball slide. It just, like, totally did the double knee, like, guitar guy move. And like bounced forward and like fell forward. It was like the most unathletic, uncoordinated thing ever. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but because like I hadn't done it in years, right? So it was like yeah. in the first point, you come out and you like try to do this fairly like nuanced athletic motion, you know, and just totally fucked it up. <laughs> and it was fine, and I played the plane, whatever. But that was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> I haven't had anything crazy embarrassing. Too bad, but. Uh, Marcus, what do you, what would you think? You ever have a hero moment or something embarrassing? Um, the last, the last tournament I ever played, we were in the finals. Uh huh. And I played the best paintball I ever played in my life that day. And I remember yep. I was a back player as well. And I shot the snake runner off the break and I was screaming to the other guys and I kept shooting on the other side of the bunker and the guy trying to fill, I was screaming and I didn't even know it. And I shot him out. Yeah. And that everybody was going fucking bananas in our snake player cam. He ran up the field and just destroyed everybody because I complete, but I didn't even know I shot the second guy and I came off the field. They're like, Marcus, you killed two. And I was like, wait, I did. They're like, yeah, you just kept shooting your gun. And the guy ran right through your fucking balls. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Um, the most embarrassing moment was I, the first match I ever played in a tournament, it was at Boston paintball. I, we came off the, the horn went off. I pulled up my gun and I got to the bunker and I went to refill it. And I was so nervous and shaking because like it was my first mat real match ever. I dumped the pod, but didn't dump it in the hopper. It just fell all in my lap. (laughs) (laughs) I completely missed. Uh, Yeah. All all 150 paintballs just in. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) See you later. Like the ground game. That's really funny. Um, Sovi asks, has anyone tried using a frozen paintball? Yeah. No. So there's always frozen paintballs are not a thing. So like, there's always that urban legend where people are like, oh, yeah, this guy at the field froze his paintballs. It was te- they, they were like marbles. It was terrible. That's not a thing. If you f- try to freeze a paintball, when paintballs get soap. cold, they just, yeah, it's, it's vegetable oil. So it's not like it's water that's actually going to freeze and get hard, A. But B, they... Um, they get brittle. Like the outside is like gelatin based. So like they get more brittle as they, as you get colder. So it wouldn't like make them like a frozen hard marble. They would just shatter. They probably wouldn't come out of your gun. The air pressure that launches the paintball out of the barrel would just make it explode. I've seen that happen with regular temperature paintballs before. So like, so frozen paintballs are not a thing. People have tried and it doesn't work. We actually refrigerate our paintballs at a tournament, um, because of that brittleness. We we call it it's um, in between points. We dump out our hoppers entirely, and then we put we put like um, bags of ice in the bottom of a cooler. Then a, uh, a layer of cardboard from usually we use an empty old case of paint, but a, a single layer of cardboard, and then we put the paintballs on top of that. So it's like refrigerated, and that's to make them more brittle for the first paintballs that come out of our gun off the break, because that's the farthest away the person's going to be from you is off the brick. So you want the brittlest paint there. And then you can have the, you know, air temperature paintballs for your, in your pods and stuff. But, um, but yeah, freezing paintballs does not make them harder. It makes them more brittle. So they're more likely to break. But, uh, Sobe also asks, what's your favorite recent non star Wars related show? Can I use a movie as an example? Sure. Mine would be across the spider verse. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I haven't seen that yet. So I will say House of the Dragon. 
That was excellent. Ooh. I haven't watched a show in a while. I watch a lot of YouTube and a lot of Twitch. Yeah. Um. So I guess the most recent one that I remember that was really good was Wednesday on Netflix. Okay. Yep. Good old Wednesday Adams. That was a good show. I'd say I'd say that's my favorite like TV show. Yeah. Very solid. Sophie says oh uh, he recommends Fubar on Netflix. Fubar. Oh, yeah. Who's in that again? Who who stars in Fubar? I've seen the ads for it, I think. Uh, Sophie asks, what is your favorite big cat? Oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is the lead. Favorite big cat. <laughs> big uh, cat. Like not Barstool's big cat? I was thinking uh, big cat coffees. Oh, oh yeah, um, there you go. No, I, I probably tiger. I think they're they're pretty badass. They're bigger than lions. That's a good one. Shout out to like uh, mountain lions. Those are pretty badass too. Cheetahs are cool. Yeah, Ooh, actually, I was. I don't know. Should I revise my answer? I go was ahead, thinking Jason. like jaguars. Maybe there you go. Pan- panthers, but yeah. tigers are really cool too. It's hard to it's hard to pick. Yeah, they, apparently you can make a liger, which is the lion tiger combo, but they oh, don't, yeah. they can't reproduce. So uh, that feels wah, wah. just wrong, a little wrong. Like yeah, don- I, know, I know donkeys or mules are like that. I forgot which one's which, but um, still, I don't know. That feels like when I've seen pictures of them from like the twenties, wherever they just look like pugs, like they're not comfortable, like they're not supposed to have that exist. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yep. They just look like the, they don't quite work right or something. You know? Yeah, something's <laughs> wrong there. I'm a little blown away because for a long time, when people ever asked me what my favorite cat is, I always said hyena. Hyena's but believe not it or not, well, it's it's from a cat family, but it's a mix of a cat and a dog. But it's not either. It's in yeah. its own. It's um, its own genetic line. Yeah, which that's shocking to me. Hyenas are weird, man. There's some species subspecies of hyenas Ooh. that. Can- that can like yeah, and they can like the females can grow this like pseudo penis to ward off males that they don't like, and will actually like try to fuck males with it. Yeah, it's that weird. is weird. They've got some bizarre stuff going on. On top of the weird laughing and stuff, like yeah, hyenas are strange. Um, yeah, where would you like to visit in South America? Sovie asked. I feel visited like we had Mexico. This question we recently. Have- uh, yeah, Mexico I said, is not in South not America. In South America. I know. I know. I was getting there. I was going to say Mexico doesn't really count. <laughs> it's what I was going to say because it's in North America. But um, I guess Colombia or Argentina because I can understand those Spanish dialects the best. Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, because I'd want to go attend a CSGO tournament out there because the Brazilian crowd is wild. Yes. Marcus? I don't know. I think you said Colombia last time. I no. did say Colombia last time. No, no I did. that is Nick, not me. Yeah, You might have chimed in I and said, Nick. yeah, because of the cocaine. But no, no. no. Something like that. Why not? It, was a, it would have been a joke, obviously. But no, I said Colombia last time. Because I'm most familiar with that culture. Yeah. But Colombia or Argentina have the easiest to understand dialects, so or accents, I should say. I would say Argentina. Yeah, Argentina is the most like civilized, from what I've been told, or not. That's that's not the right way to say it. The closest wow. culturally to America is what yeah. I was trying to Argentina. say. Argentina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. There's some some countries in South America that are not that civilized, so <laughs> it's fair. Yeah, or at least parts of countries are are you know. Not that civilized, but um, Sophie says, if there was anywhere in the U.S. that you could spend a week, Disney not included, where would you go? Hmm. Easy for me. I'd go okay. visit my family in Michigan and then sometime during the week go over into Ohio and ride roller coasters at Cedar Point because that's not Disney. Mine would be <laughs> Kansas City. Oh, nice. I would pick somewhere beachy, like California or Florida. Just like a beach resort. Nice. Chill. Yeah, that'd be my pick. 
Uh, what's your least favorite food? Allergens not included. Yes, Nick, chocolate. No, that he's not allergic to chocolate. He's not right. allergic to chocolate. No, he's not. This is just that's his meme. That's like me saying I like chickens. Like I get fed the him fuck chocolate and he didn't even know. Uh, yeah, exactly. Don't he don't laugh. Like, I had a, a girl I was saw back in college did that. And then I got all fucked up, and she was like, oh, yeah, oh I guess you sketch. weren't lying. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> You're, she, yeah, she's a nurse, pretty, too, the scary it part. pretty messed so. up. You're yeah. a towel. You're, You're a towel. towel. <laughs> uh, uh, what, least God. favorite food. I I alluded to this. I did have, laid down some foreshadowing earlier. Carrots. Carrots. Raw carrots suck ass. That's the only food I actively dislike. Like I'll, That's the only thing I'll actually... Well, not you don't like thing, cooked carrots? Cooked carrots, I do. Raw carrots Carrot are the juice? devil. Nope. Carrot juice is good. It's sweet. No, I, it doesn't even really taste like carrots. I'm out. The only carrots I like are in soup when you can't taste them at all. <laughs> like mushy carrots. Yeah. I really don't like Brussels sprouts or kale. Actually, I'd say I dislike kale more than Brussels sprouts. Kale is, kale is disgusting. Like, Go. I feel like you haven't had it prepped properly. Or, cause kale's, I've, oh, had kale, prepped, kale's I've had worse it prepped than, in multiple ways. Kale is worse than Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts can be bad, but if you prep them the right way, they can be really good. I yeah. actually really enjoy some a lot of Brussels sprout dishes. I can tolerate some Brussels sprout dishes. They're not my favorite, but like I can tolerate them. I anything that has kale in it is just I throw it out. <laughs> I've had kale in like I think it was this I don't remember the sauce type, but it was a pasta dish that also had like spicy sausage in it. And that was good. That's probably the best kale experience I've had. But it was also so masked by all the other flavors that like you couldn't it was just like crunchiness, you know? That was one of my biggest pet peeves growing up as my mom would always try to sneak kale into stuff to see how much she could get away with before I would notice. <laughs> oh no. So I'd just be eating and I'm like, Oh, this has kale in it. Why? Oh, I thought you wouldn't notice. I put barely any in there. And I'm like, I see it in there. Right. That's funny. Why? Um, my least kale. favorite, my least favorite food is oysters. Okay. Fucking disgusting. <laughs> Shit, really, exactly. It's fucking gross. I don't the think whole... I've ever had like raw oysters like that. Now that I think you about should. It. I never tried the loogie on a shell. <laughs> 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 They're like, just uh, put a hot sauce on it. I'm like, I am not eating that. Nah. I, yeah, I, the, if I want salt water, I'll just go drink a cup of salt water. The fuck out of here with that. Fair enough. That's fair. So I have one last thing to say. We finished the working class questions. Uh, I have some breaking news. Before like that, Adam, Nick, thank oh. you all very much for submitting working class questions this week. If you want to ask us a working class question, go join the Discord and look under the podcast section, working class questions, type any of those questions in there. We will include them in the show and answer them for all of you. Oh, yeah. There and you, you can go, find Nick. the link for our Discord uh, in this di- episode's description. Um, what I was going to say is I have an Adam Schefter-esque paintball tweet. This just in. Uh, I don't have like a breaking news sound to play, so that was the closest thing. But uh, Gronkin87, aka Jacob Castingway, aka the former most eligible bachelor in the nerds community, is uh, going to be the current most eligible paintball player free agent in New England. Shut up. <laughs> yes, indeed. So my sources tell me that uh, as of this week, he uh, he'll be searching for a new team and malicious is the front runners for uh, who might pick up his contract. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working Working Class Class Nerds. Nerds.